Hey everybody, Michael Campbell here, family pastor. Just wanted to go over this Sunday's lesson, how it applies to the children, how it applies to us as we engage in being the primary disciple makers of our home. And so this weekend we have a good one. This is Jesus being baptized in Matthew chapter 3, Mark chapter 1. Uh, the first instance we see the Trinity in the New Testament. And so it's a really important one. But the question I must first ask is what gives you hope? And it seems like a simple question, and for most who attend church regularly, like, we know the right answer to say. And, however, it's actually the most important question that you would have to ask, and every person who's ever lived has to answer, because that answer will determine our security and eternity. And unlike the hope that the world has to offer, we can offer, uh, and what we have is a steadfast hope that will ultimately never fail. And in the Gospel accounts, of Jesus' baptism, we see John the Baptist offer words of warning that lead us back to the question, what ultimately gives us hope? And John warned the Pharisees sternly uh, that no family, tradition, outward practice is sufficient to save people from the wrath of God uh, for them to save them from their sin. But like, people are saved only by the grace of God received through repentance and faith. And the same is actually true today. Though we may be tempted to find our hope in the, the faith journey of our parents or grandparents or even children, those experiences aren't sufficient to save. Though it is a gift to have family members uh, who have placed their faith in Christ, our hope doesn't come from them ultimately. Similar, similarly, no tradition is actually sufficient to save either. Though we may uphold to traditions or practices or creeds at times, baptism, the Lord's Supper, prayer, and so forth, those practices alone are not able to save from sin and secure eternity from God, like with God. So John the Baptist knew this, and he made it clear that faith leads to repentance, and that brings a certainty of salvation. The larger context of the New Testament reminds us that this repentance is always paired with genuine faith. And when these things present the believer will, uh, presented to the believer, that's when they start to bear the fruit of the Spirit. So again, what gives you hope? The only answer is that we must put our hope in Jesus. Only faith in his finished work on the cross rescues us from sin and death and empowers us to live forever with him and promises life of God forever. That's what we're going over this weekend. If you're looking at this, whether you know, you're know you a leader of your classroom, leader of your home, parent, guardian, anything in between, this is a good opportunity for you to invite your kids to discuss what baptism is, what it represents. I know at Grace Church, we're having one in May. I think it's Mother's Day. And so these are conversations to start having. We see the example of Jesus Christ getting baptized and what that represents. Um, many more discussions and topics and questions, memory verses to go through as a family. They're also in this thread. Feel free to reach out to any of us to get some more information on that. But until next time, God bless and take care.